Hey there, Hilton here with the L Sky Actions, and tonight I'm going to be doing a video tutorial um, on an image um, that a photographer, a fan, and a forum member sent me. Um, Brandy, Brandy Stump, thank you so much for sending us this beautiful image. If you're listening out there, we really appreciate it, um, and it's it's awesome. So here's the image right here. Great image, love the composition, beautiful subject. I knew once I saw this, I was like, wow, i got to work on this. So thank you so much, Brandy, for sending this over. Um, she shot this with a Nikon D90, and the the lens was a 50 millimeter 1.8, and the exposure was, aperture was f2.8, and the um, ISO was set at 250, and the shutter speed was 1 200, one, ah, sorry, one two hundredth of a second. So, um, and also, uh, you she shot this in manual, manual, manual um, exposure, and I love to see that. So good job, uh, well done, Brandy. Um, one thing though that I would have done differently, and I've got to throw this in because I want to help you guys out as much as possible. I would have shot um, the exposure. I would have dropped the ISO down to 100. Now, I don't know the D90 if it lets you drop to 100. I don't know that for sure. So um, if that's the lowest it lets you, uh, you know, drop to, then, then then great. The lower, the better for me, especially if I'm outside and I'm using natural light because the cleaner the image um, is going to be out of the camera. Um, so I would have shot that at uh, 100 ISO, and I would have used that... 50 millimeter and I would have um, that 1.8 I would have really dropped it down to 1.8 um, the bokeh on this is fantastic but at 1.8 it's even better um, and I'm a huge bokeh fan so personally that's what I would have done the exposure um, the I'm sorry the shutter speed would have been at um, if I was shooting at 1.8 ISO uh, 100 um, I would have dropped my exposure around 1 one hundredth of a second 1 80th of a second somewhere around that area but that's what I've done um, so next time Brandon if you're out there doing it um, try that exposure see how it turns out um, okay let's get to it so this is the before this is what she sent me um, straight out of the camera and here's what we're gonna end up with so again here's the before and here's the after uh, very clean warm tones um, you know, more of a vintage uh, type tone, but clean at the same time. Um, so I'm going to show you how we did it. Okay, so we used um, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, six different actions. And oh yeah, we're using the big bundle set within CS3 through 5 um, to work on this photo. So the first action that I ran... Um, was this time to shine um, and I already preloaded these actions so this video will go by a lot faster for you um, so it'll be shorter so here we go it's time to shine um, I ran that and all I did actually I didn't do anything with that I ran that at 100% and then I ran oh so light and vibrant and I dropped this action down to 50% and then what I did was I went in with I went in uh, within this action and I uh, killed the sharp layer because we already have that with it's time to shine, and I didn't want to um, you know doubly doubly is that even a word I didn't want to um, sharpen the image twice if that makes sense so I clicked off of that sharp layer. The next step um, I ran uh, dodge it, and for those of of you who are newbies who are watching this right now. Uh, it's a brush and anytime there's a black mask you want to make sure that the foreground's white to paint on the um, the action so dodge it brightens up you know an image what we wanted to do is we wanted to go in and brighten the eyes so I um, clicked on this black mask made sure the white the, the foreground is white and um, click on the brush tool and just brush over the um, the eyes at 20% brush opacity so I brighten them a little bit. Here's the before again. All right, there's the after. Okay, next action I ran uh, was an action called uh, Georgia Peach, um, and this is 
um, a really warm toning action and we ran that at 55 percent and all I did was click on this mask and I took the um, the action away from the eyes I brush it off the eyes just the eyes because I wanted that blue to really pop out um, my personal preference uh, I like um, sometimes it really looks good when you mix in cool tones and warm tones and so that's why I did that so and then with a white mask for you newbies out there you want to make sure that the foreground's black to paint it on and then with a brush opacity and my brush opacity was at 50 percent um, okay the next action I ran was an action called vintage instant photo and it just adds a little bit more of that warmth um, hazy not so hazy not quite that hazy um, tone but it's more of a warm vintage type tone and I dropped the action to 25 percent and again I clicked on the mask and I brushed off the vintage instant photo on the eyes because I wanted that blue to really pop out the last thing I did was I ran um, Grape Charm and um, see all I did was I ran over the whole action and then I brush it off everywhere except her eyes um, and, the, and I dropped the action to 25% because what Grape, grape Charm does is it really gives it that, that great cooling effect and I wanted to get, um, really give it that effect on her eyes um, so that's what I did. Um, I could raise it. Just watch your eyes. It's all, all you need to look at right now. I'm going to raise the action to show you what it does. See how, like, you know, it gave it that purple, bluish, great tone um, that we're going for. But I wanted it just to be very subtle, so I dropped it down to uh, 25%. All right. So after we do that, um, we flatten it. Yes, discard hidden layers, um, which is the burn it and the layer that we um, clicked off, that sharp layer within um, Oso Light and Vibrant. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate, duplicate this layer. I'm going to show you a little trick, and I've done this in a, um, a few of my uh, previous videos. We are going to, you see these dark areas under the eyes? We're going to get rid of that to give it that more of that clean look that we're going for. So all you do is you go to the sample tool and you click on an area right under her eyes that's you know like that there's the color we sampled then we just go to the brush tool increase the size Set it more. okay and we're gonna drop the brush to around 30 percent brush opacity and all we're gonna do is just paint on that sample it's just very subtle I'll even uh, increase the side of the brush and brush it on her cheeks just a little bit to make it even more clean. Get rid of those dark areas. Okay, um, next thing, sample on this side as well. Brush opacity 30%. Just brush it away. Easy peasy. Alright, perfect. So, there you there you have it guys um, here's the before again beautiful image and then the after light vibrant gives it that vintage warming tone and it's clean at the same time so uh, Brandy thank you so much for sending this image uh, feel free to post uh, any questions you guys who are, who else yeah who I'm, I'm off today guys I'm my tongue's tied Whoever else is watching this, any newbies out there, feel free to post any comments, uh, questions, and um, we'll talk to you.